morning. So I was given the task of explaining everything about all our cloud in 15 minutes, which I'm not going to do. So what I'll do is I want you to quickly appreciate about three or maybe four uh, very important characteristics of our cloud and how we built it and how that's different from some of our competition and probably leave it open for questions. And we'll spend actually a good chunk of time after that to show how we are using the cloud to do some of the things that we are doing. So it's going to be a little bit of talking, of course, few slides, and then, of course, my colleague. Barista. Uh, barista. barista is, Gregory is going to help us uh, run some of the demos. And uh, it's probably going to be very interactive you know, going forward. Uh, next slide, please. So this is uh, roughly where we are from our cloud, as, uh, as Abby mentioned. OK. Uh, the currently we run on AWS. Uh, let me straight right up front. We are not depend on AWS. It was our choice of delivery right now. Uh, we, our cloud is independent. We can actually move on to any any particular one. Uh, but the key thing that I would like you to take away from this one is that because of all the 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 countries and some of the restrictions that are coming in several parts of the world, we have the ability to practically run any place where there is cloud can run, you know, you know as a public cloud. Um, one very salient features that we have uh, compared to a lot of other competition that we have that have, you know, you need to take a rack and then you put it somewhere and kind of, you know, put your VMs and all that is we, since we are a pure software cloud, we can actually run and start a new by the way, each of them are called regional data centers, and then we have a global data center that actually connects all of them together. So one point that you need to understand is our data that we collect, which you would see you know, in a little bit of time, is uh, we can actually now gather and do our machine learning and then AI after that across the whole globe. We have access to all the data that, uh, that happens across the whole, you know, whole uh, gamut of uh, data centers that we have. Uh, we have, as I said, uh, three. Another very salient feature that we have is we have three ways in which the cloud can be consumed. This is, again, very unique for us. We can be a public cloud. It can be a private cloud. And it also can be an on-prem where we actually the, the cloud is run. So what we want to do quickly is to show how quickly we can launch a data center. Actually, we can start a new regional data center in a matter of minutes. So with that, Gregory is going to start a, launching a data center so that hopefully by the time we are done with our demo, you would actually see a new data center up and running while we are talking about the whole thing. So Gregor? Yeah. So it's me wearing multiple hats in this. And while it's not my normal job to run <laughs> Q, uh, uh, DevOps, I'll take my best shot, right? So what we're looking at, uh, looking at is the instance on the AWS as a choice of the uh, deployment. And let me just quickly check. I will deploy ES1. So nothing's there. Now this is very, very, I'm kind of in a tough spot. This is the first time ever that I'm deploying an RDC, right? So the third gen clan, so I need a little bit of help. <laughs> so bear with me. <laughs> so as a way of deploying the cloud, yeah, that was it. So what you're looking right now is we have the pre-deployed services because this is a weaponized, this is a, uh, a process, this is a product that we offer. So if there's any big ISP, big MSP, or whatever you, uh, you want to do, we have the ability to productize the third generation cloud. And we'll talk about the scalability in a moment, but it will be up in about 26, uh, 26 minutes, and we'll take a look at how it looks later on. All right. All right, thanks. Um, so as I said, one of the first point I would like to make is the uh, deployment of consumption. Uh, again, a lot of our competition do, do not have the ability to go across all those things. So the second very salient uh, feature that we have compared to a lot of our competition is our architecture. Again, this is your classic. If you go to Google and say how to build a cloud, this is what you see. So there's no rocket science here. 
the key thing that I would like to point out is, as we are building, uh, if you look at a lot of our competition, what they did is they took an architecture that they had sometime in the past, and they were kind of moving it along and rudging it along. So what we actually built is a new and fresh third generation cloud uh, the, the main benefit that we get out of that one is the scalability. How quickly can we scale? So we made sure that along this whole path where the data is moving from you know, access points or devices, switches and all towards the cloud, and when you have the users using the, our uh, UI or a mobile app or a third party as they're moving down, we made sure that along the path we can actually scale. So just to give an example, about two years back, we had about you know 150 to 200,000, actually close to 200,000 devices in the cloud. Today, with the same cloud, with the same architecture, without touching anything, we are more than triple, and we don't have to do anything different other than just adding a little bit more computation and add a little bit more storage. So the main point that, again, I would like to stress is the way in which we design the cloud essentially allows us to scale horizontally very easily, and this is one of the biggest advantages that we had because when we had some big customers join us, we didn't have to tell them that okay, wait, you know, we need to, we need some time to build the data center for you and increase our capacity. So if you go to the next slide, so again, I don't want to bore you with all the technical details of each one of them, but the point here is, the way it is built is we have very good load balancers and everything is done using clusters and a lot of our uh, technology and our services are done as microservices. So the biggest advantage that we get because of this one is we can literally change our software without ever interrupting the customer service. Because in the past, if you notice, a lot of companies, what do you do is you actually send out an email, say, hey, you know what, I'm going to upgrade my cloud from Friday at 2 o'clock to 5 o'clock, you know, stop using it, and you go and you update that, right? So all our stuff is since they are all clustered, and since they are all running in parallel, we not only have the high availability, but we can literally change all our applications and cloud as the customer is running without impacting them. Um, <coughs> The other point that I would like to stress is the fact that since we are microservices, and by the way, um, myself and Gregor, we came from Aerohive acquisition, so all the services that Extreme has, it's relatively very quick for us to integrate that into the cloud because all we need to do is launch that as one more service that we have and stitch it, and then we can go there. So from an integration point of view, this is really giving us a very quick and agile way of expanding our customer base. The main advantage of that, which is actually the, the, the final uh, you know, point that I would like to make is, I mean, you may say, that, okay, so what? Okay, your cloud can expand and you can take a lot of people. As you know, as Abby also pointed out, one of the key things that we are focusing on is machine learning and AI and getting a lot of information. So the ability to continuously have the access to the data and more importantly, the ability to get a much wider and bigger set of data across the whole globe and being able to get there very quickly is what is going to be the differentiator. Because nowadays you can argue that anybody can build these clouds. It's just that they do not have access to some of the way in which we built it, and more importantly, the amount of data that we can collect across it. So we would actually show you a little bit of a demo as to how, how, big a, how big a data set that we can reach because of the architecture that we have, because we can add devices uh, very quickly. So this quickly tells you roughly in a day, and, and by the way, one of our uh, RDC, the regional data center is in Ireland. So at any point, it has almost like 1.3 million you know, clients connected, about 150K devices, and about 2 million passers by, you know, 800 million, uh, or 800, sorry, 700 million devices and all that. So instead of showing you this, actually what we'll do is we'll actually show you right now how our cloud is processing and what's the amount of data that we can uh, get to. So Gregor, if you can get to our cloud right now. So this is live data. So this is our one of the data center, uh, one of the regional data center that we are driving right now. So, so ju just a little bit correction. This is 
are public cloud. So this is a couple of diff yeah. different RDCs collect, uh, connected. So this is, this is across a couple of RDCs. So as you can see, you know, about 2 million clients, about 6.6 .6 million clients, you know, on a per day basis, roughly the average, about 600 and, you know, 600,000 devices. Um, so those are all roughly, you know, you can see how much, you know, where we are collecting the data. The key thing is, please pay attention to this because this is essentially going to be something that, you know, Gregor also will show a little bit down the road in the demo. So we are processing about 3.4 petabytes of data through our devices at this point. The reason why that's extremely important is, as you all know, the validity and the and the value of the machine learning and the AI that you do depends on the amount of data that we have. Our devices, in conjunction with our, with our cloud, is processing that much of data every day. So all the data that's actually passing through our devices will get a look at every frame, every bit, and every byte of the data to collect all the information that we are getting. So it's not only sufficient that you have a cloud, you know, as some of our competition says, yeah, okay, you know, we have a cloud too, here is a cloud, right? It's not just sufficient if you have the cloud, but do you have the ability to process that much of data and be able to glean and learn, you know, information from that much of data? And that's what actually makes the value that we bring to the table lot that much more because it's not based on 100 devices or 200 devices, right? We have ability to process that much of data in our cloud to go through that. Uh, we will come back to this again, but uh, just remember that this is, this is the level of uh, scalability and the sophistication that we achieved to be able to take all the learnings from all the devices that we manage across the globe to be able to apply them for our machine learning algorithms and also to the AI as we go forward. 